Hey hello friends welcome to my channel in this azure devops tutorial series today let's discuss about work item query language just wiql in azure devops so before going into work item query language in detail let's try to understand a generic example that we have been using in our day to day it life okay so you consider you have a larger database and if you want to fetch any items from that database you use a query language called structured query language or sql right so similarly when you have a hundreds or thousands of work items associated with your project you can use this particular query language called work item query language to filter all the work items that is required for your project okay so let's see how we can work with wiql in detail and let's see few classes and other important aspects that is present with wiql and finally we will see a very basic example using wiql editor okay so to start with you need a something called wiql editor okay so if so you can go to your project i'm going into my project project online devops demo and then uh, you can go to this marketplace by clicking on browse, browse marketplace you can go to your visual studio marketplace and you can search for wiql editor so this is extension which we can use to work with wiql so i'm getting it for free all right okay i've already installed this extension on my organization so it is no longer required so now if i go back to my uh, project if you go into this boards section you can see finally we have something called wiql playground by general you know practically you won't have this extension unless you are unless and until you install that from your marketplace okay so once you install you can see this option here so if i click on wiql playground you can see this is the home screen of my wiql editor here from here you can write queries uh, to fetch all the work items from your project okay so this is a very basic ui view of your wiql playground okay before going into this in detail let's try to understand few aspects and few other sections that is present in wiql okay so because i feel it is really important for you to understand um all these aspects to actually work with wiql okay so all these concepts are almost similar to sql but there are few other uh, smaller modification that has been changed across according to azure devops and let's see one by one with example okay so this is going to be more of a theoretical session um so just i would suggest you to be little patient and try to understand what are different aspects associated with wql okay so first we will see about different class present in wql okay so we have most commonly used class called select from where order by and asof i will try to go into everything little quicker because i have lot of slides to cover so first we have select um it identifies the field to return for each work item written by query like you can select the fields which needs to be selected from the project and from and generally we will have tables right similarly we have work items or work item links so where is used to filter the uh, used to write the filter criteria for the query next we have something called order by using order by you can sort your um, work items based on your based on ascending or descending order and this is something asof okay asof is something very unique to azure devops or else it specifies a historical query by indicating a date for when the filter is to be applied for example the query returns all user stories that were defined as active on february 11 2020 for example say if you want to uh, return all the user stories that was made active on february 11 you can use this particular syntax like asof second february date okay so by using this particular uh, so this is a very interesting class that can be used with wql in azure devops right next some next we use this date and time pattern because 
the reason why i have covered this topic is because this is very widely used and regularly used sometimes it might be a little confusing because i have seen a lot of people make mistake with choosing the right date and time pattern for their project okay so that's why i have covered this slide let's try to look at all the uh, definition of all the date and time pattern okay the date and time pattern you enter for date time field should match that which you select through your profile so basically it should match with your profile or the id that you are logging into azure devops quotes singular double quotes are supported date time literals used in comparison they must be in the dotnet date time format of the local client computer running the query unless a time zone is specified date time literals are in the time zone of the local computer okay so i have given few examples here you can see first i have used something called time zone called gmt and here i am using a different time zone okay so based on your uh, requirement you can uh, you can select the right time zone so important key important thing to notice you can see here they must be in the dot net time time format of the local client computer running the query unless a time zone is specified date time literals are in the time zone of local computer okay so if you do not specify it will take the time zone of the local computer okay this is one way one example of date time pattern next i have different examples of date time pattern too so when the time is omitted in a date time literal and the day precision parameter is equal to false the time is assumed to be zero which is midnight okay you can see if, if i have not in uh, uh, if i omitted the date time literal and the date time day precision parameter is false then it is assumed to be zero you can see this particular uh, area where my timing is um, given as zero whenever we give everything as zero it means it is starting from midnight okay and the other way you can use is there is something called iso 8601 format which is valid no matter the locale this iso 8601 represents a date and time by starting with the year followed by the month day hour minute seconds milliseconds you can see i have given an example here for using iso 8601 format okay so these are different ways in which you can use date and time pattern in wkl with azure devops and next we'll look about few custom fields okay so you have an option to create custom fields in your query in wkl okay so here i have given few example uh, to give you a very clear understanding you can see i have a friendly name of the fields where else the reference name that i have provided you can see i have added a label called custom before everything so for approver i have custom dot approver request type i have custom dot request type or scope estimate i have custom dot custom estimate so so you can uh, prefix the label custom before your name okay finally you have something called specify filter class where class so this is again very similar to the sql that you've been using day to day so the where class specifies the filter criteria the query returns only work item that satisfy the specified criteria okay so you can see i have given where here and where the work item type will be user story and the state is active and assigned to is to myself okay so this is how you can use where condition to in your wql azure devops site okay and next we have something called operators okay so these are different type of operators that is supported in wql so the list is quite large so um, you know i will leave it to you to do as a homework to try all the different operators and how it works but let's see a very quick um, uh explanation about what are the different field types that can be supported with this operators okay so we have boolean field type where you can use equal to uh, identity operators um, and equal to in the field so these are different ways you can use boolean and we have date time format and we have double guid GUI means global unique identifier which is a 128 bit uh, something similar to double but the length will be quite large and we have integer values and we have identity operators right and we have plain text when we use plain text we can use uh, conditions called uh, contains words does not contain words is empty is not empty and we use regular strings and we have something called a tree path which is used to generally specify the iteration path that we use across your our queries 
okay so these are different field types that is supported by the operators <coughs> next we will discuss about macros or variables so in wql we have something a few inbuilt macros that we can use it right away for example you can see whenever you use at me it will uh, take it will fetch the current users uh, value and whenever you use this at me for example say you want to fetch out all the work items that is assigned to yourself so whenever you use at me a macro uh, you can fetch all the uh, work item that is assigned to you okay so, and next we have something called current iteration current iterations uh, generally specifies the work item that is assigned for the current sprint or iteration and we have at project we have something called start of the day start of the week start of the month start of the year so these and all are self explanatory uh, so you you can use these inbuilt macros whenever you are writing queries and we have something called at today you can use the today's value today's date or today's value to be uh, used in the query and we have something called any use this variable to search for work items that related to any value that is defined for a particular field okay so if you want to fetch any value based on any conditions you can use this any macro okay finally we have something called order by um order by is generally used to sort the uh, uh, sort sort the fields based on our ascending or descending order you can see finally i have used order by in my query where um i am ordering it by uh priority and also by created date in the descending order okay so this is how you can use order by two okay so these are very important or basic uh, things that uh, i want to show you as part of wiql uh, wiql let's see an example and then uh, see how we can use this wiql in our real time project okay so here i i so i showed you the uh, wql playground in the editor that uh, by default it will specify defaultly it will be shown as soon as you install this wql editor extension right so you can use this particular syntax to actually write your queries okay before writing an actual queries let's see what are options present here you can see we have an option to import you can import the any kind of queries into wql playground similarly uh, it will go give you the uh, you can import it from your local similarly you can export to if, if you export an, uh, by providing file name say sample one you can export it to you can download it here and you can open it in queries okay so basically this waql is an extension of the queries um, section we saw earlier okay so you can open it in queries and you can see this you can create a new query here so whatever uh, I, let me show you an example and then again open in queries so it will show you it in very detail but where else if you open it in queries you can use this particular option to create a new query too so you can create a new query here and you can select the all the items and create a new query okay let's see what are the different uh, so first let me run by run this default query okay so you you are selecting id work item type title state area path and iteration path from the work items where the team project is at project and order by descending order okay now if i run this you can see it is fetching me all the work items present in my project okay so you can see the, uh, it has fetched all the work items in my project okay so in case say if i want to fetch only the active items active user stories okay say for example i want to fetch only the user stories which are currently active okay so these are the queries that you will generally write in real time what kind of queries you will mostly write is you want to see what are the open bugs that is present you want to see what are the active bugs that are uh, active work items or active task or active user stories that is assigned to you uh, so you want to see what and all tasks we have closed in the last sprint so these kind of queries are the most widely used queries in your real time projects okay so here you can see i have select statements from where so for our requirement now is to select the user stories only right so, so where 
system dot team project equal to project and and my um, what is the second column this is work item type right so system dot work item type equal to work item type equal to um, user story user story okay um, so and then I want to select only the active ones say and I will miss and and system dot Uh, state system dot state equal to uh, active right so active are the current in progress items that I've been working so if I run this query you can see it filtered all the values all the work items which is of work item type user story and uh, all the work item types all the states which are currently active okay so this way you can write any type of queries that you want to fetch for your project as i said earlier few most common queries that is used is you want to know what are the open bugs assigned to particular person you want to see what are the open tasks that is assigned for your team um, you want to see uh, what are the uh, user stories that you have closed in the previous print so these are very common queries that is used across most of the project but it will vary across to very um, regarding to your requirement you can have your individual queries and you can have the shared queries and you can use it across the teams as so okay so if i open now open this particular in the query section i am clicking on open in queries now if i open in the query section you can see now it fetched me only the user stories which are active okay so that i ran that query and i'm opening it in the query section now i have all the filter criteria here so now what i can do is i can save this query say i will name it as um, open user stories okay so it will be saved under my queries folder or any other folder you can so if you want to create it for your own you can use under my query section if you want to share it across your project you can create it under shared query section and share it across your team so i'm clicking on okay you can now see now i have created a new query called open user stories so here we have open user story so this way you can create a query you can link this query from your wql playground editor too okay so this is a very basic query that i wanted to show you to make you understand how this wql editor works but trust me in real time the uh, queries will be little more complex too because you might have different work item fields you will have different uh, custom fields according to your project requirement so based on those um, your query might vary here in this example i have not used any daytime or any complex asof stuffs so I would suggest you to try those as a homework and if you have any queries please let me know in the comment section. If you like this video please subscribe and follow my channel. Thank you.